Welcome back to Garden Ninja. Today I'm doing a video guide on how to look after orchids. Now orchids are probably the most common houseplant in the UK and they get loads of emails and questions from people saying how can I keep my orchids alive, how can I keep them flowering and maintain them. So today I'm going to show you these three orchids that are at three different stages of the life cycle and show you how you can look after them and keep them in tip-top condition. So I've got an accomplice today as well, which is this little guy, who is Barry, my new border terrier, but are you going to behave? Yes, I think he is. So before we move on to looking at these orchids, I was lucky enough to go to Singapore's orchid garden a few months back and see how these bad boys grow in the wild. So let's have a quick look at that before we return to get the top tips for orchid care. So orchids are epiphytes, which means that they grow on other structures, such as trees, rocks or other plants. And it's really demonstrated here, you can see these roots, and how the orchids have attached themselves to this tree, and they then take moisture in from the environment through these roots to sustain themselves. Probably the most frequently asked question is how often and how should you water your orchid? And they come in these clear plastic tubs so you can see the roots, and a good rule of thumb and a little phrase I have is if it's green, then it's serene, but if it's grey, water away. So most people struggle with the watering of orchids, and this is the main cause of problems either with flowering or with orchids dying back. So you've got to remember where do orchids come from. So they live in trees in tropical climates, and they rely on rainfall to give them enough moisture to sustain both the growth and the flowers. So what we want to do is to mimic that rainfall. So around every 5 to 12 days, depending on how warm your house is, how the orchid is looking, you're going to need to water it. Now they should never sit in water, they should never be left to soak. But I'm going to show you two easy methods for watering your orchid that guarantees success and is really stress free. The first method could not be any easier. Literally with a tap, you're going to run water through the transparent pot so that it drains out of the base. And you're going to do that for between 30 seconds to a minute or simulating rainfall. Now if you use this method, you're probably going to have to water it more often, maybe around five to 10 days. With method two, which is an alternative method, you put your orchid into the bowl, which it is, making sure that it's water tight, and then you simply fill the bowl up to about two thirds with water. There we go. And then you literally leave it here for about five minutes. Then when it's done, you then grab hold of the pot, Lift it out until it's water draining. Pour away the excess. Leave it to drain. Again, tilt it to the side. A bit more comes out. When it finally finishes, and when you're finished, you put it back in the pot. Put it back wherever you positioned it. Now the next question I always get asked is how to feed your orchid, and it's entirely reliant on you to feed this to keep it in good health. Now because most orchids are based in a bark growing media that you can see in here. What happens with bark is that as it starts to break down it will take nitrogen out of its atmosphere to help it decompose, which then restricts nitrogen from the plant. And nitrogen is really important for leafy growth and orchids leaves are really important for photosynthesis. So ideally you can buy orchid feed that's specially formulated that has a higher than normal nitrogen level, really low potassium and phosphorus because they don't actually need a huge amount of fertiliser but because that bark's taking the nitrogen away you need to make sure that there's enough in there to satisfy the bark and also your orchid. So I'd recommend that you fertilise your orchid maybe once a month. You don't want to do it every week or every time you water because you could exhaust the plant. So slow and steady wins the race and that will keep your orchid in tip-top condition and flowering throughout the season. So pruning orchids is pretty straightforward and there's a few tips I can give you on how to prune them. 
So with this example, you can see that it's already flowered and the stem has been allowed to die back. Now ideally, when it's finished flowering, you cut back the stem to the next node whilst it's still green, and then you'll get some more shoots that then fire off with more flowers. But in this case, and this is usually quite typical, it's been allowed just to die back. And what you need to do is with a sharp pair of scissors, is just cut that back near the base, and then hopefully the orchid will send out another node, which will in turn turn into another stem and then flower again. You can also do a bit of maintenance pruning of any of these aerial roots, these ones here, that are above the compost that have kind of gone all shriveled and dry because that means that they've pretty much died back. So be gentle but just take off a few of those little shriveled bits just for neatness but you don't want to cut them all the way back. So a healthy orchid should have these lovely bright green fleshy leaves. And you want to keep them clean and free of dust so that they can photosynthesize inside, which means that they can absorb enough light to feed the plant. If you've got yellow blotches, black leaves, or really dark green leaves, it means that it's either in the wrong position or it's been overwatered. So you can tell the health of the plant by the leaves. Now this one is in perfect condition, but if these start to change, go yellow or black, then you need to have a look at the positioning and the feed and maintenance of the plant. So I have to direct sunlight, but still with light is best. So that's it, Garden Ninja's guide to keeping perfect orchids all year round, really stress free. If you've liked this video, why not subscribe to my YouTube channel where there's more garden design hints and tips and other how-to guides as to how to look after plants. I've been Garden Ninja, thanks for watching and happy gardening.